to another SUP Border video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about SUP safety equipment to get you thinking about some of the equipment you should consider taking with you and going for a paddle to help keep you safe. Now, whether you're going for a 10 minute paddle with mates or a longer SUP adventure, the same information applies. Now, the great thing about SUP and what appeals to so many people is that it's relatively easy to learn the basics and requires minimal kit. Just grab your board and paddle and off you go. But as a result, this means that many paddlers, many with little or no previous water sports experience, are getting afloat with absolutely no thought to safety. And our recent SUP border survey confirms this, with many paddlers classing SUP as a very low risk sport. Now I for one have had many happy and trouble free paddling experiences, but I know only too well that the situation on the water can change really quickly. Weather and paddling conditions can quickly change. You can get wet and cold when you're least expecting to. Kick can break or fail, or you might need to call for emergency help when afloat. So as well as thinking about the weather and the paddling conditions, which we covered in a previous video, it's also well worth thinking about the equipment you're taking with you to help keep you safe when afloat. Now, when most people think about SUP safety equipment, they think about a leash. Now, a leash is a really, really important piece of equipment when it comes to paddle boarding. It's what attaches you to your board. So if you do fall in, your board stays within close reach giving you something to hold on to and allowing you to quickly climb back on. Now, if you've fallen in, you'll know that generally what happens is your board launches off in the opposite direction to you. If you've ever tried swimming holding a paddle, you'll know it's not easy. And on a windy day, your board can quickly be blown away from you. So by wearing a leash ensures it stays close to you at all times. Now, despite many new paddle boards, including a leash in their packages, as well as information explaining the importance of wearing a leash, it still amazes me how many people I see out on the water either not wearing a leash at all, or if there is a leash attached to their board, it's just trailing along behind, which means they might as well not have one attached. So please, if you're flat water paddling, whether it's on your own or you're on a board with mates, make sure that one of you is always wearing a leash and you're attached to the board. Whether it's a cord leash like this one or a straight leash, they serve exactly the same purpose. The only benefit really of, of using a cord leash on flat water is that it doesn't trail along behind your board and less chance of it getting caught up in seaweed and other bits of debris. Now when I say always wear a leash, there are a few exceptions. For example, when paddling in moving water, whether that be tidal estuaries or rivers. In those situations where there's a chance of your leash becoming caught in the debris underneath the water and you and your board possibly becoming trapped, then either not wearing a leash, or if you do wear a leash, wearing a quick release belt, um, allowing you to quickly detach yourself from your board may be the safer option. But if you're just starting out paddling, then I'd suggest you look towards the safer, flat, calmer waters to begin with. Now, moving on to another piece of SUP safety equipment, that's a personal flotation device, or PFDs, as you might hear them being called. Now, there are two main types of PFD, a buoyancy aid and a life jacket. Now, a life jacket is generally more bulky with extra flotation around the neck, helping not only to keep you afloat, but also your head and face clear of the water, reducing the risk of drowning, even if you're unconscious. Now, a buoyancy aid is designed to give you extra buoyancy and help keep you afloat. But if you found yourself unconscious in the water, it wouldn't keep your head up and stop you from drowning. Now, most of the time, whether you wear a PFD is personal choice. Yes, there are some locations that require you to wear a PFD and they won't allow you to paddle without one. But here in the UK, when paddling on coastal estuaries, whether you wear a PFD is totally up to you. Now, being a confident swimmer myself, um, if I'm just paddling, staying close to shore, or I'm out testing kit with other members of the team, then I don't always wear a PFD. But if I'm paddling further afield, or doing a downwinder, or paddling in more exposed conditions, then yes, I definitely would wear a PFD. Now, I often hear people saying, oh, I'm not going to wear a PFD, they're big and bulky and just get in the way when I'm paddling. But really, that's not an excuse because there are some great PFDs on the market at the moment that don't restrict your paddling at all. If you're after a PFD to give you a bit more water confidence, maybe you're not a particularly strong swimmer, then a more sort of traditional style PFD, um, either zip up the front or an over the head one like this one here, is probably the kind of the thing you should be looking at. But it's well worth considering not only its size and buoyancy level and that it's fitted correctly to ensure it does what it's designed to do and keep you afloat, but also that you're still able to climb back on your board when wearing it. So maybe opt for one that's got less buckles and straps and pockets on the front, making it easier to climb back on your board. If you're looking for a PFD more for sort of emergency use, uh, maybe you're a confident swimmer, you just want, want to take something with you just in case of an emergency and you find yourself 
in the water, then something like this sort of waist belt PFD, which you have to activate yourself, might be more appropriate. They're really small, really compact. You almost forget you're wearing them, but they are there in case of an emergency. A really great piece of kit. Again, whichever PFD you opt for, just make sure you wear it. Might sound simple, but there's no point at being under the bungees at the front of your board or in the bottom of a dry bag, because by the time you get to it, it might be too late. Now, I've often heard people say, oh, I don't need to wear a PFD, I don't need to wear a leash, I'm not going to fall in. But who can say they're never going to fall in? Now, I, for one, can think of many occasions when I've ended up in the water when I've least expected to. For example, paddling into a submerged buoy, uh, falling off because a swan's jumped off the riverbank at me, or just when I'm too busy taking in the surroundings around me and lost my concentration. So you can never say you're never going to fall in. So whatever the location and time of year that you're paddling, it's really important that you're prepared in case you do go in. Now that leads me on to clothing and what you're wearing when you go for a paddle. Again, because SUP is so simple, just grab your board, grab your paddle and off you go, it can be really tempting to just go paddling in the clothes you're wearing without much thought. But that can be really dangerous, particularly this time if you're in the UK, spring weather when it's starting to warm up outside but the water temperature is still pretty nippy. If you fell in wearing your tracky bottoms and a t-shirt, you might find yourself in trouble. So whatever time of year you're paddling, just take a moment to think about what you're wearing and how you're going to feel if you do find yourself in the water. In the warmer summer months, as well as thinking about something offering you a bit of UV protection, um, it's also well worth considering wearing clothing that's quick drying, isn't going to absorb too much water so that you'll soon dry off and get warm. For example, a rash vest or a quick drying t-shirt, or maybe even some thin two-piece neoprene, not as bulky as wearing a full wetsuit, um, but will offer you some warmth in case you do end up in the water. When paddling in autumn, winter, right through to early spring, when the water temperatures are a lot colder, it might be worth thinking about clothing that's designed to keep you dry if you do fall in. Now Palm offers some great waterproof clothing options, everything from a full-on dry suit to the sort of more versatile two-piece dry suit options. I particularly love these waterproof trousers that have got inbuilt socks, uh, not only keeping you dry when launching and landing, but when combined with a tight-waisted uh, jacket, make a great two-piece dry suit. If I'm going paddling when the water temperature is still a bit chilly, I would definitely opt for wearing something more like this. Yes, you could choose to wear a wetsuit when paddling, but really a wetsuit is more suited to sort of surfing or when you're planning to be in and out of the water lots. If I'm going for a flat paddle over the colder months, then I definitely would opt to wear something more like this, something that's gonna keep me dry and therefore warm, whether I'm in or out of the water. Wearing something like this also allows you to layer up underneath so you can easily take layers on and off. Just remember if you do take clothing off, it's very tempting to tie it around your waist and I often do that myself. Um, but just bear in mind if you do fall in, your spare clothing gets wet, you're then going to have nothing dry to put on. That's where a really handy accessory dry bag comes in. Now dry bag, just as the name suggests, is a bag designed to keep your items dry. Whether it's from the rain or splashes on your board, it's a really handy accessory to have. But to ensure it does what it's designed to do, it's really important, it's good quality and it's sealed correctly. Just roll it down from the top of the bag and fasten with the clips. Now Palm offer a great selection of dry bags, everything from sort of big 75 litre rucksack style dry bags to sort of the smaller individual transparent bags. Now I for one am not a big fan of taking my mobile phone everywhere with me, um, but I do see the importance of it when I go paddleboarding. So I've got it as a form of communication in case of an emergency. Now a dry bag or a waterproof phone case is ideal for just popping your phone inside and keeping it dry so that it's there if you need it. A whistle is also a really handy little simple piece of equipment to take with you. A real simple but effective way for calling for help in case of an emergency. Just tie it onto your buoyancy aid. Now if you're going for a slightly longer paddle, then it might be worth maybe taking a spare paddle with you. A three-piece paddle is ideal because you can just break it apart and put it under the bungees at the front of your board and then it's there if you need it if your paddle accidentally breaks. Or just take some trusty duct tape with you. Um, it's amazing what you can fix with a roll of tape. For bigger adventures, you might want to consider taking some other pieces of safety equipment. Palm do a really nice compact survival shelter, an emergency bivy bag, as well as a really handy sort of first day dry bag. If you're thinking about getting into some other disciplines such as whitewater paddling or wing foiling or surf foiling, then you might be looking towards a helmet to help keep you safe on the water, so it's well worth checking those out too. Whatever type of paddling you're doing, make sure that not only your board and paddle are in good condition, but also the equipment you're taking with you too. 
There are so many great accessories out there that I can't talk about them all. I've been using loads of palm accessories over the last couple of years and I can honestly say they're quality products that really do work. Palm have been making clothing and accessories since the 1980s and it's clear that safety is the top of their agenda. So remember, you might not be planning to get wet on your next paddle, but you never know. So make sure you're prepared. I hope that this video has given you something to think about, not just the board and paddle that you're taking with you when going paddling. To find out more about staying safe on the water, check out some of our other set border videos, such as how to read weather forecasts and how the different weather will affect different padding locations. Remember, if you've used any of this equipment or if you've got any other suggestions of great equipment to help keep you safe on the water, then please let us and our readers know. For more videos and reviews, check out Supwater Mag, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and remember to check out Supwater Pro. Thanks for watching and see you next time.